Hello everybody, welcome to another tutorial video. In this video, we will learn how to perform an inverse distance weighting or IW interpolation method using Python. The IW interpolation method is very simple, I will explain it briefly now. So here I have 5 points. I know the value of 4 points, however, I don't know the value of the last point. So I would like to estimate the value using the inverse distance weighting interpolation method. The formula is shown down here where ux is the unknown or the interpolated value, the ui is the point with a known value, w is the weight, d is the distance, and p is the power parameter. The interpolated value are obtained by multiplying the known value with some weight and then dividing by the total weights. Since I have four known values, therefore here I have four weights. The weight is calculated based on the distance between the location of the known value to the location of the interpolated point. From the weight formula, we can see that the weight decreases as the distance increases. For the value of power parameter p, you can choose the values of 1 or 2. This parameter also will control the influence of known points to the interpolated points. This slide shows the visualization of points with known values and the interpolated point. We can conclude that step by step of the interpolation is, is to first calculate the distance between the location of known values and the unknown values, then we calculate the weights, and finally we calculate the estimate of interpolated value. Okay, let us now back to Jupyter Notebook. So here I already load my data using pandas. The data underscore grid here is the point with an unknown value or the location that I would like to interpolate. If you watch some of my previous videos about Matplotlib, this data underscore grid is the unstructured triangular grid point. And the data underscore velocity here is the point with a known value, which is the velocity value. There are five columns, their location in the x and y columns, the velocity component in the u and v columns, and the velocity magnitude in the mag column. Here I visualize the point with a known value and the unknown value, and down here I zoom in somewhere around here. Using the interpolation, I will be able to estimate the value at this black point, and later, I can use the interpolated value together with the unstructured triangular grid to draw a contour field plot using the tree contour method from Matplotlib. In this cell here, I create a function to calculate the distance between two points. And in this cell here, I perform the IW interpolation method. The procedure here is the same as on the presentation slide before. First, I calculate the distance between the point with an unknown and known value and get the closest 5 points. Next here, I check the distance of the first closest point. If the distance is less than 1, then the interpolated velocity value is the same as the velocity at the closest point, and we don't need to perform the interpolation. However, if all the distance is more than 1, then we perform the IW interpolation. Here I get the velocity magnitude from the closest 5 points, and here I calculate the weights based on their distance. Finally, down here, I multiply the velocity magnitude with their weights and divide it with the sum of their weights. This process is repeated until the last interpolation point. Here, I break down the IW interpolation process one by one so you can see the process and the result from each step. Start from the i equal to zero or the first interpolation point. I calculate the distance, sort it from the smallest value and pick up only the first five points. The result is a data frame with index and their distance. We will use this index to select the closest 5 velocity data. Here we check the distance of the first closest point. If less than 1, then we don't need to perform the interpolation. Here the threshold value is 1. This is depend on your data. Here I know that velocity within 1 meter is not that different. So I set the minimum distance as 1. If there is no point with a distance less than 1 meter, we perform the IW interpolation. First, we select the closest 5 velocity data using the index that we obtained from the distance calculation. Next, we calculated the weight. And finally, down here, we calculated the interpolated value. And the result is shown here. We repeat all of this process until the last interpolation point. Once it's done, you can save the result using the numpy.save text method. When I run this cell, it takes around half an hour to finish this calculation. As you can see here, I have 9,000 interpolation points and I have a 17,000 velocity data. So there will be a 17,000 loop which is repeated around 9,000 times. So that's why it takes very long time to finish this interpolation process. I already saved the result on a CSV file, so I will not run this cell again. Once I get the interpolation result, next I will plot the contour field plot together with the unstructured triangular grid. 
first I load the interpolation result and then I create the unstructured triangular graph object and then plot this using the tree plot method. And here I plot the velocity magnitude obtained from the inverse distance weighted interpolation together with the unstructured triangular grid. And here is the final result. This color represents the velocity magnitude which is obtained from the IW interpolation method. Actually, we can directly plot a counter plot using the three contour field method without performing the IW interpolation. And the result will look like this one, which is giving a similar look like the one that we calculate using the IW interpolation method. However, we need a mesh layer to cover this area here because there should be no velocity in that area. Therefore, if you have a data point and an unstructured triangular grid point, I think it's better to interpolate your data to your grid point and then plot the counter field plot. Uh, this Jupyter notebook file is available in my GitHub repository. The link is available in the video description, which is you can download it for free for your practice. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial video.